Yes, Minister. Uh, just to say, uh, just to address the, the questions or the amendments, uh, and to say that I've already commissioned a wide-ranging review of the OECD on SME and entrepreneur, entrepreneurship policies in March of 2018. And part of this extensive review is examining the provision of supports for indigenous businesses and how they are assisted by government departments and agencies to grow. And this report will examine the strategic framework and delivery system for SMEs and entrepreneurship policy in Ireland. And the report will be published, uh, uh, Deputy Nocton, in quarter three of this year, and we will await its findings and recommendations. Uh, and just to say, to reassure uh, Deputy Nocton that I am, I am very much focusing on indigenous Irish companies and I'm very conscious uh, that uh, you know that they also need to be supported in terms of Brexit and for that reason I just take that this opportunity um, to, to, to list out the supports for non-exporting businesses uh, first of all we have the Brexit loan scheme and that's open to all businesses uh, it's a, a working capital facility uh, that is available at four percent um, interest rate repayable over three years uh, in terms of Intertrade Ireland they have a 2250 um, start to plan voucher and you don't have to be an exporter to get it it can be an indigenous Irish company regardless of how many employees you have uh, you apply to them to get that and uh, yesterday I launched their uh, start to act voucher that's available through Enterprise Ireland and it's 5,650 euros and um, that's now available. Uh, just to say also that Intertrade Ireland got an additional 1 million euros uh, from my department in budget 2019 and that was without the need for matching funding from uh, Northern Ireland because I knew that uh, there was going to be an increased uh, demand for their services in, in, in view of Brexit and for that reason they got an, an increase of 17% in their budget which represented 1 million euros. Um, uh, also, um, the, uh, they also have a complete suite of uh, advisory services that's available to everybody, whether it's a tariff checker, uh, it's online customs training. So for those that are importing, they can avail of that uh, service from Intertrade Ireland. So there's a broad range of services there. In terms of the local enterprise offices, uh, they're also marketing the, uh, the Intertrade Ireland schemes. Uh, and number one, and this is again available across the board, they have customs training, they have mentoring, so a business planning available. They give out consultancy grants, and that doesn't apply to, um, uh, to, to any limit on employees. They can deal with companies whatever size. Uh, they do lean grants. They do innovation supports, that's vouchers, etc. So all of those uh, supports are available through the local enterprise office, regardless of the number of employees a company has, and regardless of whether they're exporting or not. And for that reason, I increased the budget to local enterprise office offices by 5 million, which was a 22% increase in budget 2019, to help them support exactly what you said, Deputy, the indigenous Irish companies. There's also Microfinance Ireland, and they have 25,000 available for lending uh, for, to, to, to uh, SMEs. And then, of course, you have the Credit Guarantee Scheme uh, that's also available. So just to say that there are a lot of supports out there available to uh, Indigenous Irish uh, SMEs who are not exporting. And uh, I'd just like to, just to make them aware of it again. And I thank you for raising this issue, because uh, you know, no matter how many times you say this, People may not be aware of the supports that are uh, available. Uh, just to say that the deputy's uh, premise as to the take-up of the Brexit supports is not correct. In fact, uh, my information is that take-up has been quite robust. Uh, the Brexit loan scheme was launched in 2018, and I'm pleased to say that there, there has been a steady stream of applications so far. The SBCI has received 462 applications under the Brexit loan scheme up to the 22nd of February 2019, and 413 of these applications have been deemed eligible for a loan under the scheme, and of those, 81 have been progressed to sanction uh, at finance provider level to a total value of 17.32 million. And it's important to remember that this scheme is not a loan for businesses to carry on as usual. We're asking businesses to carefully consider what they need to do successfully uh, to, to, sorry, to successfully address their Brexit challenge through innovating, through changing or adapting their business model in some capacity. 
These responses may include strengthening their product offerings, developing new markets to diversify their trade footprint, changing their organisational structure or developing new capabilities. Work continues on the longer term future growth loan scheme which will help eligible businesses invest strategically in a post-Brexit environment. This scheme was announced as part of Budget 2019 and is expected to launch it very shortly. In 2018, Enterprise Ireland provided approval of, for funding of €74 million Euros to 535 Brexit-exposed companies across a range of Brexit financial supports. In addition, there were Brexit interventions with over 1,000 companies who have, who have significant exports to the UK. Over 1,000 companies have attended Brexit advisory clinics across the country, 4,400 companies have completed the Brexit SME scorecard, and almost 1,000 have completed the Enterprise Ireland online customs insights programme since December. Visits to the preparefrabrexit.ie website, which contains information on a range of Enterprise Ireland, LEO and other agency supports, has increased tenfold over the past 12 weeks, and we have reached 90% of the SME audience with our Brexit support communications. My department has also allocated 8 million extra for Brexit staffing and supports across enterprise and regulatory agencies, the rollout of new customs training through the local enterprise offices and Enterprise Ireland, an EI guide to best practice on managing currency volatility. And you mentioned there, uh, Deputy, about uh, customers uh, needing to hedge their, their, their currency risk and, uh, as I said earlier, an additional one million uh, for Intertrade Ireland. All of our supports are kept under constant review and we have uh, no feedback to say there are any gaps. Uh, any changes uh, you know, we, that they, are, they have requested, we have actually dealt with them. For example, uh, I meet regularly with the representative bodies, the business representative bodies. I have met with the retailers and the food importers uh, to ensure security of the food supply. Uh, and I, I meet with all the agencies in my department. Uh, one example was they asked that the import VAT at 23% uh, be brought, it was brought to my attention. I also then uh, brought it up with the Minister, Minister Donoghue, and uh, he has uh, made changes in this bill to address that, uh, that particular issue about paying uh, VAT uh, at the point of import, and that would have huge cash flow implications for businesses, but that has now been addressed as part of this Brexit bill, and that is a big benefit for businesses. So uh, I don't uh, feel that it is... Um, uh, necessary uh, to, uh, you know, to, to uh, put legislation in place to ask to have these reviewed, because all the time uh, we are reviewing them, we are looking at, uh, at uh, you know, are there any gaps there, and uh, uh, you know, we're doing all of those things. In terms of the Brexit Stabilisation Fund, uh, I have got uh, agreement. Um, to increase the rescue and restructuring safety net for I Irish SMEs to 200 million euros, and that agreement uh, was achieved uh, uh, last week. We got that from the EU Commission, uh, and we have very close engagement uh, with the Commissioner, and uh, she has reassured us that uh, she, uh, she, you know, that she, she is well aware of the of the challenges facing this country, and she has reassured us that uh, they will do everything they can to assist us. Um, and just, uh, I, I think I, I have, uh, you know, covered most of the issues that uh, have been raised there. Uh, and uh, just to say that, for that reason, uh, I am. Uh, uh, you know, I, I cannot support these amendments because I do not feel it's necessary to put into legislation that we carry out a review. And uh, we, you know, we, we do work with uh, all of the bodies, and I meet businesses very regularly. I'm meeting them on a daily basis. I was at an Intertrade Ireland event yesterday, and uh, it was, there were a huge number of businesses there, again, availing of the supports that are out there. So there are a lot of supports, and I encourage people who haven't engaged, please do so. Government is here to help. We want to help you in terms of preparing for Brexit. Go to my